I'm pretty sure most of you are familiar with Docker as the go-to standard to run, build and ship containers. I mean, we've covered it countless times here on the channel, but it is actually just one implementation of a standard. There's another alternative around, which is called Portman, and this claims to be faster, more secure and open than Docker. I briefly covered it here on this channel some time ago, but back then it didn't really have a desktop application that I needed to run containers locally on Windows or on Mac. And most of the other container management tools that I was using at the time, like Portainer for example, they didn't really work well with Portman, so I didn't pay too much attention to it for a while. Now that has changed because Portman released the Portman desktop application, which has now come to a point where it is a mature alternative to Docker. It can even act as a drop-in replacement so that any other tool that needs to talk to the Docker socket can now work with Portman 2. Also, it has very other exciting features and a much more secure architecture. So I've recently asked myself if it's the right time to switch from Docker to Portman. Let's find out. First of all, let us go through some of the basics of Portman and how to install the Portman engine or Portman desktop application on your servers, workstations, or yeah, wherever you want to get started and build containers. The homepage portman.io should give you a good starting point where to find all the necessary information and download all the tools. As you can see, it is supported on all common operating systems such as Red Hat based Linux distros, of course, Mac OS, Windows, and yeah, basically any other Linux distros will also work with with Portman. Here you will also find a great documentation, a getting started guide, migration instructions to seamlessly tr make the transition from Docker to Portman. And you can of course also download the applications such as the Portman desktop app. So this is the uh, Portman CLI tools plus a graphical uh, application similar to Docker desktop, or you can simply just install the CLI tools on, yeah, all the operating systems. For all the Windows and Mac OS people, as you probably know, you're not able to run Linux-based containers natively in these operating systems. So what Portman Desktop does is, when you install this, it will automatically install a small virtual machine that is used with a Linux-based operating system, and that will then run the actual containers. On Windows, it is based on WSL2, similar to Docker Desktop, and on Mac OS, it will use QMO based virtual machines. Now you simply can just execute these instructions to install that or you can just go through the guided installation wizard of Portman desktop. It is very easy so I think I don't need to show that to you. The only thing that might be interesting is so when you've installed the Portman desktop application so you will see a screen like this and when you go to the settings you can actually in the resource tab see this small virtual machine and you can also adjust uh, some settings like how many CPU cores it has, how much disk space or memory it will use and you can of course stop, start, delete or also create multiple Portman machines. Now feature-wise Portman and Docker are very similar to each other. So both applications come with a CLI tool that allows you to easily build, run and share container images. So for example if you execute the Portman command in the terminal it gives you all the commands very similar to what you can do with Docker. It actually has the same commands. So for example if you want to see all the current running containers just execute a Portman PS dash dash all then it shows you all the running and also the stopped containers that are existing on your system you can manage images with portman image to build uh, download inspect push and pull images run containers like this simple hello world container so that will show you if portman is installed and running correctly on your system uh, so basically you can take all the docker commands that you know and replace the word docker with portman and it will work 99 percent of the time which makes it very very easy to make the transition from Docker to Portman because you don't really need to learn a new language or a new syntax. The only thing that might be worth noting is that Portman doesn't really natively support compose files similar to Docker Compose. But don't worry, there's also a transition layer existing so that can execute Docker Compose commands just with the Portman command. So make sure you installed Docker Compose tools on your system and then you can simply execute Portman Compose. And as you can see, this basically just runs all the Docker Docker Compose commands, but with an external provider. Now, I haven't really experimented a lot with this, but it should actually just work like Docker Desktop because it uses the same commands or the same tools under the hood. But let us come back to Portman Desktop, so the graphical interface. And this is the new exciting stuff because they recently added some significant improvements and 
updates to this application. So Podman Desktop is very similar to Docker Desktop. Um, you can use it to manage existing container resources on your system, manage the virtual Podman machine that you need to run the containers on Windows and Mac, and it gives you the ability to see all the downloaded container images, pull new ones from any registry that you have configured, build new images from a container file if you like, or see all the persistent volumes on your system. You can delete them, you can get some statistics about the usage data, so how much storage they consume on your hard drive, create new ones from the graphical interface. So it basically just executes all the Portman CLI commands in the background, but it is great to have a graphical representation of every information that you can get. Now one thing that I really love about Portman Desktop and that makes it kind of special is that it doesn't just support Portman as a container engine, it also supports multiple container engines that you can install in extensions. So for example, it also supports containers that are running in Docker Desktop. And it also supports other extensions and container platforms like OpenShift, Lima, or Kind for managing local Kubernetes environments. And this is really great. For example, if you install Portman Desktop besides Docker Desktop and you go to the containers, you can see which ones are managed by Portman and which containers you have created and started in the Docker engine. And you can easily just go into this project. For example, this is a project that I've deployed using Docker Compose. And I can easily just stop this. I can delete it. I can even inspect more details about this project and about the running containers in it. I can also go into logs and see all the logs that these containers produce. So this is really nice for making the transition from Docker to Portman because you can install both systems on your workstation and see what you like more. Of course, you can also manage Portman containers. You can create new ones here from a Docker file or run just run an existing image on your system. But it can also work as a drop-in replacement for any Docker tools that you have installed on your system. So for example, if you go to the extensions tab and go into the settings of your Portman machine, there is a button that is called Docker Compatibility. And this is a feature that allows you to use Portman as a drop-in replacement for Docker CLI tools. So that basically just uh, creates a link from the Docker API socket in the Linux file system and redirects it to a helper socket that will talk to the Portman engine. So that basically means any tool that you install on your system. And by the way, uh, such a thing is existing for the Portman engine as well on your servers so that you don't need to install the Docker engine anymore, but you're using all the benefits of Portman. But of course, that raises up a question. So what benefits am I talking about? Why should you actually consider replacing Docker with Portman when it does just similar things? So one strong argument for running Portman instead of Docker is the way how it handles containers. Because Portman by default runs containers in a rootless and daemonless way. So that means, unlike Docker, which typically requires root privileges and a small application, the Docker engine to be running as a service in the background, Portman doesn't really need that. It allows you to run containers as a non-root user totally without any separate process. And this is great for security because it reduces the attack surface and potential vulnerabilities on your system. It doesn't mean though that Docker is insecure, but if you've got a security problem maybe with one of your containers and an attacker attempts to break out of this container, it is harder to do that on Portman because it utilizes a stronger isolation technology like user namespaces and it does not run as root, which makes it harder to escalate privileges on a system. That's why security conscious users usually prefer Portman over Docker. And another big difference is the support of grouping containers in pods, which also is where the name Portman comes from. <laughs> And this is a concept you might know from Kubernetes, and this simplifies all the networking and resource sharing between those containers. For instance, if you like to build a web application with a database, or if you have a container that just needs another small helper process, you can simply put two or more containers in the same pod. So then they share the same IP address, the same MAC address, and port mappings. And that is more like you would do it in a Kubernetes environment. Also, because Portman Desktop supports different container engines and orchestrators like OpenShift, Kind or Minikube, it might be easier for developers to work with Portman Desktop because it is a local environment that is more like the real infrastructure they're developing for. 
By the way, let me also show you how to create such a pod of containers in Podman and how to manage this effectively. So you can easily just do that by executing a Podman pod command and then you can start with a new empty pod by executing Podman pod create and then start attaching your containers to it. But I think it is much more comfortable to manage this in a Kubernetes YAML file because you can also simply just execute run and test Kubernetes manifests on the local Podman desktop app application by using the Portman engine, which is really amazing. So I know this is not 100% compatible to Kubernetes and it doesn't, of course, give you the full functionality of a Kubernetes cluster. But I think this is great for quick testing and developing stuff. Yeah. So you can basically follow the same syntax, just like you would define a Kubernetes manifest file. For example, let's create a new pod and give this a name pod test one, for example. And in the specifications, you can uh, start creating your containers. So yeah, let, let's uh, start with a simple Nginx test. I think this is great. So one thing you need to take care of is uh, that you can't really use any ports lower than 1024 because if you would want to expose port 80 on the host, this would require root privileges. And as we learned, the secure architecture of Portman usually doesn't run as root users. So it is not allowed by default to expose any ports lower than 1024. Of course, you can still run containers as root if you like, but I think it is much more secure to do it in a different way and expose it on the host port like 8082, for example. Let's also deploy a second container in this pod because otherwise it wouldn't really make much sense. Yeah, and let's, for example, go with Postgres uh, database. Yeah, I'm just defining. So we don't need a port for this, but I'm just defining some environment variables here like a password. This is just a quick and dirty test, of course. Yeah, and I think that should be all. So this is our Kubernetes manifest file. So we will save this pod test one YAML. So let's save this. And in the Portman desktop application, there is a button in the top right corner, which is called play Kubernetes YAML. And when you click on this, you can select your YAML file and run it on the local Portman container engine. But you can also do it in the terminal by executing a Portman cube play command and just execute your YAML file. And as you can see, now we have our pod with both containers in it. You can see all the uh, existing containers with the Portman PS dash dash all. And here is is our new pod. Of course, this also shows up in the uh, Portman web UI and there we can go into the containers and see all the logs, inspect the container details of yeah, any of the projects here. Let's do a quick test if I can reach the web server. And as you can see, this is our Nginx container. And of course, if you don't need the project anymore, you can also easily take it down by executing a portman cube down on this YAML file. And this will automatically delete everything that is assigned by this uh, manifest. Now that is all great. Portman definitely brings something new to the table, a powerful architecture that is built with security in mind. The concept of pods and its desktop application which now supports multiple container engines in the background but I have to say, in some areas, Docker still feels a bit ahead of Portman. And that is mainly because Docker's ecosystem is just so widely adopted by everyone. So many people are creating tools for it or developing extensions. Like in the Docker desktop, you can discover so many interesting plugins that are very straightforward to install and use. There's really a lot of stuff in it. And I know Portman desktop has a similar feature to run those extensions, but as you can see, it is not 100% supported and when I read something like this honestly I'm not really thrilled about trying it out. Also Docker itself recently introduced some cool and interesting features like the ability to get more insight into container images and layers or the integration of Docker Scout that automatically scans and shows you all common security vulnerabilities in your container images. By the way I'd like to make a video about Docker Scout at some point if you're interested in it so please let me know in the comments. I will also add it to my Docker course that I'm currently working on. If you like to learn everything about Docker and containers, by the way, a lot of this knowledge from the course can of course also be used in Portman as well. So if you like to learn this, then check out my Patreon page. As a member, you can watch all of my videos there without any ad interruptions and you get some other cool benefits. Of course, every membership supports all the free content that I'm creating here. So a big thanks goes out to all the members in our community. This is really amazing and <laughs> this really 
really helps me so much. But let's go back to the topic. So the fact that Docker is still so popular, it actually is one of the reasons why I think it is much easier for beginners to get started with instead of Portman because so many people just like myself yeah, are creating tutorials and guides that just use Docker as a container engine. And consequently, you're finding much more content around Docker than Portman. And as a beginner, you really don't care about all the advanced security stuff in the first place. You just want to learn the technology. A Docker desktop, by the way, also has a whole section called the Learning Center, where they walk you through the first steps of managing containers with Docker desktop. This is really amazing. And this is where Portman is still falling behind. So again, if you're conscious about container security, the secure architecture of Portman might be more important to you. yeah. But in the, in the end, as always in IT, it depends on your priorities, what's the better tool, Portman or Docker. For me personally, I'm more excited about Portman as a technology, but from a content creation perspective, I think it would be better to focus on Docker for now. So any tutorials I'm creating for managing servers in my home lab, I still will use Docker. But for some projects and experimental stuff, I will definitely try out Portman, maybe also in combination with with more stuff of the Red Hat ecosystem like OpenShift or Fedora, the cockpit web UI that has a great support for Portman. That would also make an interesting video, of course. Yeah, I know, so many projects that I probably will never have time for. But anyway, I will keep you updated about this and when anything important happens in my home lab, be sure I will let you know. But now it's your turn. So please tell me what do you think about Portman? Do you consider switching to it from Docker? Leave a comment below. And as always, many thanks for watching. Have a great day and I will catch you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.